This is the National Education Radio Show, live from Cardiff City Hall. Listeners, you'll be delighted to hear on the telephone live, I have Nick Corston from Steamco. Nick, how the devil are you? I'm very, very well, Russell. How are you doing? I'm very good well. No, you. You're very kind. Uh, no stranger to our interviews and our programme at all. Nick is the co-founder of Steamco. Stunning and amazing gentleman. Uh, Nick, just reintroduce yourself to the listeners if you can, please. Give me a quick snapshot of Steamco. Well, I'm just a dad, Russell, I'm afraid to say. A dad who um, started Steam Care, a non-profit social enterprise in my son's primary eight years ago in West London, in Paddington. And basically, we, we've rolled it out across the country now to bring communities, parents and other carers, like local business people, artists, engineers, into primary schools to run little creativity festivals that we call Steam Co Days. And, and it's just a journey. And it's just off the scale. We're having such a great time course you are just remind listeners what steam stands for because folks will be familiar with the stem uh, format but there's an extra a in there talk to me about that absolutely well i think most of the people that we're going to be talking to in, in this project is are interested in well we'll know about steam the steam revolution steam power eisenberg kingdom renal but we're all we're all about steam the acronym s-t-e-a-m science technology engineering and maths that's stem but we spell it with an a for art because Art is about creativity and it's about connecting people. And that's that's why we're so passionate about a steam, steam really. It's a creativity thing. Brilliant. If you had an elevator pitch, what would that be? Just give me that quick eleva- uh, elevator pitch for me now for listeners. Well, fun enough, I'd, for me personally, I've got a master's degree in electronic engineering. I've got a grade AA level design and a big mouth, as you're about to find out. So <laughs> <laughs> I always pause while people snigger at that. Um, so basically, Russell, I get technology. I'm creatively aware. My in, my career has been in the creative industries like mm-hmm. yours. And I love selling a good story. And, and for me, creativity as we enter the fourth industrial revolution is possibly the best story to be sold. Indeed. Now, we talk about this as the fourth industrial revolution. We talk about the creative and the problem solving and the critical thinking skills. Um, uh, Professor Winston talks about this and uh, there are a number of interesting dimensions about how important. We're both involved in some really interesting um, arts uh, council work here in Wales and it's really exciting and you catch me actually on uh, an arts council for Wales job as well. How important are those critical creativity skills? Well, there's a fairly um, contentious phrase that a chap you may have heard of, a chap from Liverpool called uh, called Ken, uh, Sir Ken Robinson. He did a (laughs) TED talk a few years ago. And in that, he said that his contention was that creativity is now as important as literacy. Mm. Now, that that gets the heckles up. People start standing up to um, to the hairs on the back of their neck. And, And because in many cases, people don't value creativity. So they think that it's bringing literacy down to the gutter where they see creativity possibly. But in fact, what Sir Ken was talking about and many of the educators in Wales are now talking about is bringing creativity up to the same status as literacy. Nobody in their right mind would devalue literacy. We're saying bring creativity up to that status. Mm, Absolutely right. Now, I'm particularly interested in what you're doing at the National Education uh, event here in Cardiff on the 16th of November. Uh, How are you connected with Cardiff? How am I connected with Cardiff? Well, how long have you got, Russell? Blimey, I hope you've got a long C90 tape in your machine today. Um, (laughs) Sorry, showing my age there, aren't I? You are. Basically, I mean, my, my parents moved to Cardiff when they first got married in the 60s. Um, they then moved up the, up the railway line, if you like, up the Welsh Marches to a place called Ludlow, where I grew up. But when they were in Cardiff, they made some very special friends who proved and ended up being my godparents. And mm. my uncle Arthur was an engineer in South Wales, in Bridgend, Cardiff, for Ford, for Bosch, working on engines and engineering parts. And... He, and, and he was an inspiration to me. He, he had the most fantastic Meccano set and any bits of Meccano you couldn't buy, he made. He was fantastic with Lego. He was a bit cheeky with the rockets and the fireworks on Bonfire Night. We won't go into that. Um, but the point is, it's, it's that inspiration for me as a child, as a Blue Peter child, that really sowed that seed for what we're about to do now, really. By coming to Cardiff, I'm doing a talk on the Friday about community engagement, not just getting parents involved, but the wider community. And that, that, that talks actually, we've actually called it the two elephants in the room, because for me, the two elephants in education, if you like, that are often overlooked mm. are the parents and the wider community, and we bring them into schools. So we're going to be talking about that on the Friday um, at National Education Show. And I've known um, 
Nikki Morgan um, for quite, quite a few years now. So I'm delighted. I was delighted when she invited me down to, to come and talk and share this day because it looks looks like one hell of an event. Brilliant. I mean, just it is Wales's biggest educational event. It's off the scale in its second year. 4,000 people came last year and amazing and I just said right we just have to do a live radio show from it so uh, here we are doing a live radio show for four hours from the event and and, uh, to give folks like you a platform an even wider audience not that you need one really but uh, an even wider audience in this particular uh, discipline I think it's really important tell me some more about Rocket Kids can you? Rocket Kids, gosh. Well, well, my dad, I mentioned him a moment ago, my dad's 83 now, and he volunteers in an Oxfam bookshop up in, in Ludlow in the Welsh Marches. And he found this book in the bottom of a box called Rocket Boys. He read it and said to me, yeah, this is the best book I've ever read. Check it out and gave it to me. And and bless him, he said, oh, I've emailed the author because and he hasn't got back to me yet. And I looked it up and I thought, well, good luck with that. Because this book sold millions of copies in French, German, Italian, Spanish. You've just done a second reprint in Chinese. Mm. There's a movie, a Hollywood Studios movie called October Sky, which is, is an anagram of Rocket Boys. I mean, you can't make this stuff up, Russell. And, and basically, it's about four kids growing up in a coal mining town, not in the Ronda, not in Merthyr, but in West Virginia in the 50s. They didn't want to be coal miners. And like me, they were rubbish at football, so they weren't going, never going to leave town on that ticket. Sure. And they saw the Sputnik, learned to make rockets, inspired by the mum, inspired by the dad, inspired by a teacher. The whole community came together behind these boys. They made a rocket that went six miles high in the sky and ended up working for NASA. Wow. And and I emailed the author after a glass of red wine one night. I actually got him on Twitter. That's the only way to connect these days. That's how you and I connect. Isn't mm-hmm. it? And um, Homer Hickam, who wrote that book, has given us permission to take this story into every British school. And we've been doing it across the across England for the last um, couple of years. And I'm really looking forward to bringing that session to the South Wales school communities as, as an all school assembly where we tell that story. We make rockets with one class of children and then we fire. Hold on to your horses here, Russell. We fire a real dynamite powered rocket about 500 feet with a parachute recovery system and you know what it looks good on radio even (laughs) it'll be the best assembly they've ever had i think you'll find colleagues absolutely willing able and very excited by this you your timing is absolutely spot on and uh, with the arts council of wales spending so much on creativity and the arts in schools there's never been a better time to look into more detail nick where can colleagues find more information about what you do well, actually, well, we've, we've got a special web page we've put up on steamco.org.uk forward slash South Wales. And, and, and there we've got information about the Rocket Kids session. We're doing a, an evening community screening on the Thursday evening. Where I'm delighted to announce that uh, Professor Mick Waters, who's one of the most amazing British educators, who's been doing mm. a lot of work with the Welsh Government on their new curriculum. He's going to be joining us at that. I've got a couple of other surprise guests I'm hoping to announce in the next few days. So that's a Thursday evening. So anybody coming down to Cardiff from further away, staying overnight in a, in a local hotel or an mm-hmm. Airbnb, come and join us at that. We'll have an evening of debate, of discussion, talking about the amazing work that's going on in Wales with their new curriculum, engaging communities, and then we'll, we'll see everybody on the Friday. And we'll certainly be rocking, rocking. You've got a stand at the show, have you, Russell? I have indeed. 41, you can yeah. come find the studio and we're broadcasting there. I'd like to catch up with you again, so make sure you drop by and we'll have another chat with us as well. And this is, the purpose of this conversation is just to kind of preempt what you're doing and get as, as many folks along to your session as we possibly can. Well, I really appreciate your support, Russ. And to hear you talking about the work with the Arts Council that you're doing there, the Arts Council of Wales, it's truly fantastic because STEAM brings that left brain, that right brain, the STEM, the, the creativity, the arts, and the creative industries across the UK are one of the biggest, fastest growing employers. And so the work you're doing around the creative industries, not just the tech skills, the broadcast skills, but the storytelling, the content creation, it's fantastic work. So so never stop that. It's brilliant work. Thank Absolutely. you very much. You're very everybody. welcome. You won't have to tell the Welsh government that. There's just another government that really <laughs> needs reminding because their heads are buried in books, I'm afraid. We're on um, it. Oh, good for you. Excellent. Uh, Nick Corston, always good to chat with you. Nick Corston, ladies and gentlemen, from Steamco. Nick, thanks so much. You're very welcome, Russell. Thank you. Online. Online. And playing across the planet. Bringing you all the news and chat from the show floor. Powered by Anderton Tiger Radio.